Balance. Balance is an eternal struggle. No fighting game is ever perfectly balanced at any point in its life. There will always be characters that are the most powerful, and characters that are barely able to function with the tools that they are given. We've already looked at one of the worst characters in Guilty Gear Striver with Andrew, and while Striver has a diverse roster with other characters I really want to talk about, with the patch looming over us and the threat that everything is about to change, I want to state something for the record so that future generations will remember our struggle. Soul Bad Guy. Didn't think I'd be making one of these in a while. I just want to start by saying that I think Strive is a mostly well-balanced game. I feel like most of the characters, even the lower tier ones, are still somewhat viable if you're able to use your tools effectively. And while most of what players consider the top tiers are definitely oppressive in their own ways, most characters still have ways to be dealt with, which can be engaging for both players. Let's take Leo for an example, a character that I'm going to talk about one day but I feel like should be mentioned quickly. While Leo currently definitely has the undisputed best matchup in the entire game, for the majority of the cast, he's someone who's able to take disadvantageous situations and still have the threat of taking his turn back faster than you could say. Wait, he's gonna flash kick, isn't he? Due to this, the few characters in the game that can do things on knockdown are generally forced to change how they go about some of their game plan. Not to mention that he's able to flash kick out of block strings, so against some characters like Giovanna who use a lot of stagger pressure, he's able to nullify those options and force her to go into a safer route. This doesn't mean he's invincible though, he's slow in both movement and recovery, making him easy to dance around, his full screen pressure is weaker than most of the cast, and his back turn can be harder to get into than you might think if the enemy is looking for it. He's still a top tier, but he has things that you can exploit and use against him, and the right player can dismantle a Leo player like a cheap desk from a Swedish store. Why did I just go on a rant about Leo? Because the point is that top tiers still need flaws. Having a character that's perfect in everything can be disinteresting for both players in the game. Okay, cool, Gecko, we get it, you're salty about Leo. When are we going to start talking about Salt Bingus Man right now? Sol has been the protagonist of Guilty Gear since all the way back on the PS1. In most games, he's either ranked mid or upper mid tier, which for the game's poster boy is generally where you want to be. But if you look at Strive, he's on the top end of everyone's tier list. I don't think I've ever seen the FGC agree on literally anything this unanimously before, so you know something is up. I swear, if anyone in the comments says, Oh, Sol is a top tier, how come no Sol players made it to EVO Finals? I will smite you down where you stand. Alright, let's go through the list. His 5 and 6p are pretty normal for a fast character. His 5p is a 4 frame starter which is definitely on the fast end but it's tied with Giovanna and not the fastest with Chip having a 3 frame jack. 6p is also pretty average. Nice overhead invincibility, knocks the opponent away on counter hit. You know, it's alright. His 5k is also fine. Wait, hold up a minute. Huh? 3 frames. It's tied fastest move in the game and it's not a punch, it's a kick. That means he can cancel it into dust moves so he gets a free knockdown on an overhead reset. This also means that frame trapping against Sol is really hard as you have to make sure that the trap is less than 3 frames which, unless you've been specifically labbing it, can be really hard to do. Also forget going for resets, the moment that Sol figures out what you're doing he just goes, <laughs> 5k my turn now. But if you look at the way that he sticks his foot out you may be able to see that it goes above his model, meaning that you can use it as an anti-air. It doesn't have any overhead invincibility, so I wouldn't recommend it. But also, that's what a nerd would say. Why is it just better than his punch? Honestly, punches aren't very useful for most people in the cast, so just the fact that it's faster, has more range, and can anti-air is kind of ridiculous. I got more to say about this move, but it's got nothing to do with his normal, so let's continue. His slashes are... Ugh. Okay, let's start with the least bullcrap move. His close latch is a 7 frame move that leaves him at plus 3. This isn't unique to Sol as Giovanna literally has the exact same move. Close slash has the unique attribute that you can dash on jump cancel it, meaning you can easily get into cycling pressure situations and different combo routes that the different characters in the cast don't have. His 2S is pretty standard. It's a nice anti-poke that can combo into 5H and even 2H at close ranges to get an RC combo or just reset your pressure. But these aren't the moves that you wanted to hear about when you clicked on this video, are they? No, 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 no. These next two are the ones that you really want to talk about. Let's get this out of the way. 
Farslash has been used to commit war crimes. Change my fucking mind. This move, despite its normal looking hitbox, is easily Sol's best move, just due to the insane pressure that he gets from it. By pressing this button, you're instantly given two frames of raw, unfiltered, unearned advantage. At least with close slash, you have to be close enough to the enemy you can smell the type of cereal they had for breakfast to get that amount of advantage. With fast slash though, you get basically the same advantage without the risk of being directly in their striking range. Meaning if he goes for another fast slash, you have 8 frames to stuff the next one. If you do go for a punish for the cycle, due to the Gatling to 5H, he's able to easily frame trap the majority of the cast. Not to mention that the move moves him forward slightly, so the range is larger than it seems. This move alone has been memed and bitched about online since the game came out, and I bring no joy in saying that we're only getting started with the problem. He's also got a 6S, which is ridiculously large considering that it's 15 frames, and it's an absolutely amazing whiff punish tool, combo starter, and combo extender. How is it all of these things? We'll fucking get into it. Just know that for now, the move is excellent reach, making it a good whiff punish tool, and can lead into some good combos on counter hit. We're not done yet though, though his heavy slash moves are nowhere near as egregious. 5HS is a good combo tool, as it causes a wall bounce on the enemy when they hit the wall. 2HS is a pretty standard move and can lead to an amazing combo and counter hit. Not the best anti-air, but very rewarding if it does connect. He also has a 6HS, which hits round start, gives hard knockdown, and leads to a full damaging combo and counter hit. Okay, I can't keep saying that. I'm sure you've noticed by now that a lot of his moves are able to just go into combos, meaning he's one of the only characters in the game that is able to get large damaging combos off of basically every stray hit. But this is only half of what makes up the character. We're going to look at the rest of his kit first. So, let's talk about why all these moves are fucking ridiculous. Souls kept most of his specials from the previous Guilty Gears, losing only Riot, Stomp, and whatever this dive kick thing was from Exard. He also lost the ability to activate Dragon Install, so he literally can't throw the game or just change the music, which is a bummer. But Jesus, if he did have it, I don't know how any of us would be able to cope. Let's start with his Gunflame. 236P causes Soul to create a small projectile that goes a short distance along the ground in front of him. You can do a short version of the animation with 214P that doesn't have the projectile come out, but gives you some meter. The Fate Now is usually used in pressure situations situations where you're trying to mask your intentions and make it ambiguous what you're trying to do to the opponent. The longer the flame is out, the less damage it does, but it's still very active. It's a pretty cool pressure tool, all things considered. Since he's a Shoto, he's also got a DP with 623S and 623HS. And this is where the problems start. Whoo boy, it's time, gamers. Let's begin with the weaker one. Coming out in 7 frames, it's tied with the fastest DPs in the game. Poor Kai, you'll be fast one day. The difference is what comes after the DP is blocked. Both Leo and Chip are negative 28 and negative 27 on block, meaning that the players have nearly half a second to get in and do whatever they want. For Sol, he becomes negative 22, meaning it's closer to a third of a second, which really doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm telling you it really makes a difference if you haven't lapped it out. Especially since it's a motion input, they can just go for another 623S when they land. 623H on the other hand is a much slower 13 frame DP, making it easy for the enemy to throw you out of it, but the reward you get for landing it is MASSIVE. The move is a clean hit mechanic, where if the move connects with the enemy close enough, Sol's damage on the second hit is more than doubled and grants a hard knockdown for some good Oki. This move also has some ridiculous properties if you combine it with fast roaming cancel, like we'll see later in the combo section, but just the DP alone being able to do 135 damage off of a clean hit and grant hard knockdown is insane enough on its own to justify the six frame difference. Soul quite literally has the best DPs. Okay, what else has he got? 236K is his bandit revolver. This is what you use in most of your basic combos as practically every special cancelable move has it connected into it for a true combo. You can also fast RC it in order to get some instant overheads. It is negative seven on block, which means it can be pretty easily punished though. 214K is his bandit bringer. A high damaging slam dunk move that has Soul raise in the air and smash your face in like you just dissed his favorite waifu. I could have sworn this move was plus on block, but it's not and that's messing with me. It causes a ground bounce which can lead to a hard knockdown for Oki or a red RC combo if it hits. 623k is his wild throw. It's a command grab that leads to a hard knockdown and that's about it. In the previous games you could be able to get a combo off it, but nah, in this one you just show them the curve and get on with your life. 214s is his ground vortex. He slides across the ground and launches it into the air when he finally exits 
executes the attack. While he slides across the ground, he has low profile properties, meaning that most mids and overheads will whiff. He can extend the range of damage by holding S, meaning he can use the move to go full screen. Yeah, no, that's fine. You can have a special that goes full screen and gives you a full ass combo and gets him into his preferred range. Because why not? I don't care if it makes it negative on block. This move is insane despite that. Finally, 426HS is Fafnir, a very large punch that causes his hand to catch fire after it. The move is slow, but it makes up for it with the increased frame advantage. How insane? Well, having the opponent blocks the moves leaves Sol at plus 11. So what? It's just got incredible block stun? No, it fucking guard crushes. Not to mention your risk gauge increases by a ridiculous amount. What the fuck, Arxis? How is this okay? Let's just get onto the combos already. Ready? Okay, so Strive is known as a high damage game. This means that short combos and single hits do a lot of damage. This inherently isn't a bad thing. I personally find it pretty fun as a lot of characters' higher damage combos are risky and rewarding, and the largest damaging combos still come from counter hits and hard ass reads. Sol is able to get these high damaging combos from lobotomizing himself and just matching on wake up. But why is this? Well, he has a DP, so that's obvious, with one of them having the least amount of recovery in the game and the other one doing the most damage on a clean hit. But this isn't the only thing he gets if he has a clean hit with some meter. He can do an insane corner carry combo that I'm pretty sure you can kill with, but I don't have any evidence of it, so uh, just trust me, bro. That's pretty high risk, right? Like, if they were to block it, you'll probably have a high damaging combo coming your way. Higher damage than you would do if you were to land it? Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Alright, it's time to look back at some of these normals. Free frame 5k is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. With it being a 2 hit, you also have a lot of time to confirm into it. But what are you going to confirm with? Like, you can only go into dust attacks, right? Like, there's nothing else you can do. The galling system has changed so much that there's literally no other options. Wait, what if you're from Dragon Ball and you don't know what gallings are? Uh, Gatlings are what Guilty Gear calls its normal cancel system. In the previous games, you were able to cancel lighter moves into heavier ones in order to get an easy but not very effective combo. In Strive, however, they changed how the Gatling system operates. So now kicks can only go into dust, slashes can only go into heavy slashes, and punches literally can't go into anything. The exception to this rule is with directional inputs. So if your character has a forward heavy slash, for example, you're able to do a combo like 5k, 6hs, and the cancel will still work. This is used by most of the characters in the game to actually get some damage off of their weaker moves, but still don't get massive combos like if they were to land a close slash. So that's the same for Soul, right? Right? Like, he's no different, right? Oh god, no. Due to the speed of which Soul 6S comes out, he's able to combo into it off of literally any of his moves, including his free frame kick. Meaning that instead of just getting a 5k into 2D or a 5k into special, he's able to do 5k, 6S, 2 free 6k, which damages the enemy for over 100 damage off of a fucking free frame. But that's not all. If Soul has just a bit of meter or manages to anti air with a 5k, then you can get combos that go up to fucking 200 damage. That's half of someone's health bar with a free frame move. Oh my god, I hate this dude. And if Sol just counter hits you with any of the slashes or heavy slashes, you might as well just drop your controller and tell your TO that you lost right then and there. Because he's going to kill you, dude. There's no way he isn't. That's it. His character has no weaknesses, and even if there were any, the sheer amount of upsides he has means that literally doesn't matter. He doesn't have to play defense because he's got so many moves that come out extremely quickly or leave him plus, his combos do literally everything that a character could want in the game, and in neutral he has so many ways to get into his preferred range that keeping him out is practically impossible. So you know what? Congrats, Sol. You win. Sol bad guy isn't fun to fight against currently. He's just frustrating. That's why... You hate fighting soul bad guys.